In my experience, the times I've compromised, we lost. The times I refused to, we won. I think that the politicians who are working at the Earth Summit are working very hard to divide the planet up. If alternate voices aren't allowed to speak up and still be a part of the process, that doesn't say a lot for democracy. For two weeks in June of 1992, representatives from 175 nations came together in Rio de Janeiro to respond to the world's growing environmental crisis. The United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, also known as the Earth Summit, was the largest, most ambitious international meeting in history, with more heads of state, more media, more security than ever before seen. Along with representatives of the world's governments came some 30,000 individuals and groups whose grassroots pressure had helped force recognition of the crisis. The diplomats referred to these people as NGOs, non-government organizations. In fact, they were citizen activists from throughout the world, there not because they were on a government payroll, but because they believe ordinary people working together can make a difference, believe they might even save the world. We followed three generations of environmental activists from California to Rio to see what influence they might have during the Earth Summit and beyond. Once you get up into the mountains and find out the broad, the broad swooping views and get the perspective on what the Earth is supposed to look like from a high point, then you have a better idea of what you need to protect when you come down off the mountain. Dave Brower, about to turn 80, learned to take risks as a pioneering mountain climber and leader of Alpine troops in World War II. Twice nominated for the Nobel Prize, he's directed the Sierra Club and founded Friends of the Earth, the League of Conservation Voters and the Earth Island Institute. Twenty years ago, he attended the first UN Conference on the Environment in Stockholm. Brower has a reputation for not compromising himself out of a good fight, a reputation that served him well in battles to keep dams out of the Grand Canyon and in successful campaigns for the creation of national parks and wilderness areas. I became an environmentalist when in my late teens there was a nuclear power plant proposed for the beaches where I lived in Michigan City, Indiana. And I joined a local organization to try to stop it and we won. They never built the plant. Juliette Majot, 35, has worked in the environmental movement for almost 20 years, since first leaving the small beach town where she was raised. She's policy analyst for the International Rivers Network, an organization that fights dam projects threatening to flood wilderness areas, displace rural communities, or pollute fresh water sources. I think it's going to be great. My first introduction to the environment uh, was through scouting. Uh, when I was about 10 years old, that's when I first joined scouting, and I stayed in it uh, through for about eight years. Michael Dorsey, 21, was raised in Detroit. He earned a scholarship to the University of Michigan School of Natural Resources and is now working on a toxics cleanup project at UC Berkeley. A member of SEEK, the Student Environmental Action Coalition, Dorsey was involved in pre-UN conference planning before receiving a last-minute invitation to join the official U.S. delegation to Rio. Rio de Janeiro, one of the most beautiful cities on Earth, at first seems proof that people can live in harmony with nature. But a closer look shows many of the same environmental stresses which are affecting the world as a whole. Spiraling population, traffic and smog, extremes of wealth and poverty with the poor, forced to live in eroded hillside slums called favelas, where clean water and basic sanitation are luxuries few can afford. The voices of the poor will not be among those heeded when the world's leaders meet here. John, rescue. <laughs> the first summit days in Rio prove hot and stressful as thousands of new arrivals compete for housing, cabs, and credentials. Been waiting long. So how's the Galapagos? The Galapagos were great. It was very restful. Dave Brower makes it as far as the airport curb before being approached by a newspaper reporter. 
no ecological understanding. It's total ecological illiteracy at the highest level. And somehow the world isn't going to keep going if we can't become ecologically literate. Since Stockholm, the, the world environment has gone downhill. We went into that conference fairly pessimistic, and we came out with a lot more than we'd expected. I've come into this one in Rio quite pessimistic because of what the governments are doing. Juliet, who arrived earlier, is staying in an apartment in Copacabana. She has to pick up her credentials at Rio Centro, the official UN conference site 30 miles outside of town. How much? How much? 50,000. 60,000. I'm here basically to follow money and, and watch power, which I think that environmentalists have to do. So I'm here to find out what kind of decisions are going to be made at this conference, which may or may not affect the world's water systems, the world's river systems. 90% of the Earth's drinkable and usable water is running in rivers, and rivers are being dammed, they're being diverted, they're being channelized, they're being polluted. I see it as, as a kind of global development crap game with very high stakes, and what's being divided up, it's kind of who gets what for how much for how long. No, I don't think it's out of the grasp. I think, I think Juliet is also hoping to organize a meeting at the Global Forum, a combination alternative summit conference and fenced-in eco-fair being held in the city. I'm trying to pull together a dam meeting okay. Okay. So to talk about rivers and dams we because there's nothing today. scheduled to talk about it. The center of the forum site is dominated by a tree of life. Its leaves made up of letters to the earth from hundreds of thousands of school children from around the world. Exhibitors at the Global Forum also include transnational corporations looking for an image fix and international development banks whose loans have been criticized as environmentally damaging. On this global environment facility, which some people are calling the green piggy bank, that it looks like the World Bank will handle, have all the governance questions of that money been let's, let's get it straight. settled? Let's get it straight. The Global Environment Facility is a, is a joint venture of um, UNDP. UNDP and UNDP. Yeah, but you just said the World Bank, so let's let's get it straight. Let's get it let's get it straight. It's it's a it's a, a joint a joint effort. The World Bank administers it, okay? 